Hello, Brenton. This is Brian, and we're going to review this FAM project that you did for me. And I'm sorry it's taken a couple days to do this, but uh, here we are, and I'm going to do it for you. Okay. So, uh, looks like I, I'll, I'll go through this as if I were drawing the plans myself, okay? So the first thing I do is change this. Customer information, looks like you have that correct. I actually prefer to actually spell out drive. So 483 Carnegie Drive. Milpitas, California, that looks correct. Okay. Um, APN. I have to verify the APN and lot and dwelling based on your Zillow uh, JPEG. I have to actually go into your files and, and see which, if this is correct. So 6.7, that's 20 times 335. So I'm going to get my uh, calculator up here. Let's see if this will help. I think my computer's a little slow, so I'll just do a calculator on my, you know. I'm com my computer's a little slow. I'm just going to use my phone here. Twenty times three hundred thirty-five watts equals six point seven kilowatts. Cool. And it looks like uh, the one seventy. That looks like one seventy is correct. You must have used the compass for that. The compass JPEG I had in the files because he doesn't give you an azimuth here. The tilt, yes. The tilt I always uh, default to twenty degrees. If uh, they don't give me a tilt here, but sometimes they will give you a tilt. And I can't read this, so uh, it's exactly how I would write it. Iron Ridge attachments, Iron Ridge rail, exactly like that. But I need it to be bigger. So point, I think I usually go point zero eight or point zero nine font. Sometimes point zero seven if I really need to uh, fit everything in. Okay. So then we go on to the uh, inverter. Okay, here I actually do two lines. I do solar edge on top. That's correct. And then the second line, uh, I put the exact, uh, the exact model number. He doesn't give us the model number here, but you can find the exact model number. And I think you tried to put the model number SE6000H, which is still missing part of the model number. The correct model number is SE6000H-US, okay? So what I would do is solar edge on top, maybe two words, solar edge. And then the second line is SE6000H-US. And then the third line, and you have one of those. Then the third line, you're also using these P400 power optimizers. You only use the power optimizers with the solar edge inverters, but I like to call out the power optimizers here. And I put power optimizer, or I just maybe put optimizer, P400. And then I count out 20 of them. There's one per panel. So I would put, uh, you know, the solar edge, the actual invert, SE6000H-US, and then optimizer as a third line, P400. And then I put 20 here. Okay, so moving on. For this, I would, uh, you put the model number, but I would also put the make. So I would put LG Solar as as a top. Uh, you know, see how you have a, hot, a top make. I would put LG Solar on top, and then the actual model number, which this is the actual model number. You did good there. And I put 20. So that's how I would correct that. Um, looks like you got the correct county for Milpitas. So you, if you ever in question of county, you can always go City of Milpitas in Google or something. You just go City of Milpitas. And you, or Milpitas is in which county in California. Sometimes you can Google that. County Milpitas, California. Those three words and it should come up Santa Clara County. So 
Good. This is the sheet index. Uh, I did see something here. So first page is the site plan. Second page is the structural. Third page is the single line electrical diagram. Fourth page is the, the module, the, the solar panel. Fifth page is the inverter. Now, this is where I differ. The sixth page, I usually put the optimizer. In the seventh page, I put the attachment. In the eighth page, I put the rail. And then finally, the last page, uh, the warning placards. Um, I usually do that because I like to keep the electrical equipment together. It's just one right after the other. I did, okay, so that's, that's my correction there. I do see a correction up here. This project consists of the installation of 20 photovoltaic modules, and I would put with 20 optimizers, power optimizers, with one utility inactive, interactive inverter. That's good. So I would do a correction. I would add with 20, quantity 20, power optimizers. The PV modules will be mounted to an existing composite rooftop. Good. You'll be changing that quite often. Using Iron Ridge flat flash foot. Good. Attachments. I would actually spell out the word attachments. And Iron Ridge uh, XR10 rails. I usually say uh, Iron Ridge rails to be more generic. Uh, the reason why I do that is I, I like to be more generic. That way they can use different interchangeable attachments and rails. So I usually say Iron Ridge attachments and Iron Ridge rails. And also, if they do require you to call them out, I would only call them out in one place in the, in the plans. I kind of avoid having to put multiple, like duplicate information. I only like to put the information one time and if I absolutely have to duplicate it, then I, I do if they require it. But I like to have each piece of information in its place in the plans only one time. That way they can go to it and, and you know exactly what to change too. And you, you know exactly where it is when you go to change it. Okay? So that's my correction there. I would just say Iron Ridge attachments, spell out attachments, and Iron Ridge rails. This is always going to be a note here for structural. Sometimes in Florida, it goes up to 180 miles per hour, per hour. so if you're doing uh, projects in Florida or any other state, you might want to check their requirements. So this vicinity map is good. I would actually zoom in further to where you only see the property line, like, like really big on this. But I would definitely make sure to capture that property line, and I want to be able to see that uh, measurement there 124.38 feet because you actually draw the property line you draft it based on that i see you did this jpeg correctly you have the pre the whole property line in there i like that and you have a measurement you can scale by that's very good okay so moving on um this is the stringing over here module dimensions i checked that that's correct module weight that's going to change if you use if you're going to change uh, solar panels, different companies use different solar panels. Roof type composite number of stories one. Looks like a one. It looks like a one story. I think that's just kind of a hip. It's extending out. Roof framing two by four at 24 inches on center. Good. Single family residence is the structure type. Num you know, if I'm doing a building like a hospital or a school or something, I'll put a business or commercial right here uh, number of roofs utilized we're only using one roof strings there's 20 panels now you can go up to using these uh, power optimizers you can go up to 25 panels or uh, as I say 25 panels if you're using the 7600 inverter you can actually go up to 6000 watts DC input. You can go up to 25 panels per string, but you can only also go up to 5,250 watt using anything but this uh, 7600H inverter. Okay, so we and we're at already at six 
6,700 watts, so we do need to break it up into two strings. That's how I um, designed that. Okay, then you drew the property line very well. Um, you have the inverter, main service panel. I would put an AC disconnect if they required it. They did not require it on this project, so you were good not to put it in there, but that's where I would put it in, AC disconnect. A um, couple of things about this. Number one, uh, I would like you to draw more features of this property. I think you had drew, drew, drawn the driveway in there and then you deleted it for some reason. But I would like you to draw the driveway on and put the driveway label over the driveway, on the driveway. And you forgot to draw this little structure back here. So checkers like to see as many features as possible. You know, if there's a million trees in the, in the photo, you don't have to go overboard. I usually don't even draw the trees. But uh, they were good to put the Carnegie Drive there, and the fire clearance, the PV rays, and the PL. So um, on some projects, I actually measure this PL if I'm doing a patio covering project for this one client that I have. So some clients will, might require you to uh, measure this, or some jurisdictions actually. So if you're in the county of San Diego, believe it or not, in the county of San Diego, they require the exact property line and the exact measurements of their from their plot map. So you got to go into the county of San Diego and get their plot map and draw exactly to what they have there with dimensions and everything. You need to show the dimensions. So, but for this one, my correction is uh, I would keep this, I typically keep this in black. That way it makes the blue lines pop out for the electrical equipment and the conduit and the solar panels. Another correction I have is this conduit, it, it, it kind of gets confusing over here with these lines. So I would probably put this label over here somewhere and just draw more perpendicular and in, in the middle of this conduit to show that that's the conduit. Another uh, thing I see is this is completely off. Uh, I can tell you did this independently and you rotated it independently of uh, drawing this house. It looks like you drew this house very well using the orthographic features. This one kind of looks, um, maybe you didn't, you might just have a good, a good hand. But I do have a video going over exactly how I draw this and I, I think it'll help you out a lot. And the name of my video is, if I can cut, I have it right here on my phone. The name of my video is how I draw a site plan 1.27.18. So on the 27th of January of this year, I came up with a video of how I draw a site plan. And that goes over exactly how I draw this. So basically I bring in this JPEG, I scale it, step one. Step two, I rotate it to be flush, like uh, flat, so that house like looks like it's flat. And then I use my ortho feature, I just sh hold down shift, and then I draw all this, this house flat using uh, straight lines, exactly straight lines. And then what I do is, and then I'll uh, draw the, uh, the property line independently of this using this, and then I'll lay the property right on top of the property line. And then I just rotate the whole thing. I, I draw all my features, I draw the solar panels, I'd snap to it first before I rotate everything back. So I draw the whole house with the solar panels and everything. That way you can draw the, this panel array separate and uh, select the full panel array and snap it right in that corner there. I like to snap it right to that uh, the fire code pathway that you created. Okay. Now right here I do see that you did not fill this uh, pathway in. So you can see in that video which commands I use. So that video again is how I draw a site plan 1.27.18. Okay? Okay, that's, that's completion of page one. Now this scale 
the scale, I, I kind of get the idea that you might not know how to scale this. or um, So I draw this, this uh, scale, the three sections, in um, the drawing. In, when I draw this, I put it right next to it here, actually. And then on this sheet, which is a separate drawing file, I only draw one of these in blue, okay? I only draw one of these in blue. And so when I place it in here, um, I can match up this uh, 30, this is a 30 foot scale right here. I match it up with just one of those blue because this looks like it might be able to be blown up a little bit more. So, um, so you're matching 10 feet in, in real life should equal one inch of the blue one that is uh, I use on this uh, sheet, okay? So when you insert it, you can snap it right to each other, the two scales right on top of each other, and then you can scale this one up and down by hand, and you can make these two match. So sometimes you can blow it up, sometimes it'll come in too big, and you can use both scales to kind of eyeball and scale it down. So sometimes this will go to one inch equals, one inch on this page equals 20 feet in real life, okay? Okay, so that's, uh, I'm not sure if uh, I'm confident that you understand how to do this, but uh, later on, maybe I can show you in person as well. So those are my corrections for page one. Go ahead and do those. Page two. All right, let's see page two. You'll notice in the new template I have over here attachments to be put, uh, you know, 72 inches on center. I have a new note right here in my new template that I'm going to give you. This is good for page two. Composite roof, 20 degrees. Two by four, 24 inches on center. Iron Ridge, again, I would delete flash foot because I only want to put that in one place and if I were to put it any place, I would put it here. But uh, that would make the lettering too small. I need to be able to read this, even this one too. This is good size lettering, but you need to um, make this readable. So anyway, we're on page two. So delete flash foot, I would put Iron Ridge attachment, Iron Ridge rail, I would delete XR10. That way it's just easier for you, you know? Because if they go to a 100 rail, XR100, they're always, or if they're doing uh, the cylindrical type or the uh, tilted foot, type at least it'll stay the same and you won't have to change this every time too okay sometimes you'll have to change this detail every time but that's pretty much what the iron ridge attachment looks like oh, let's go there and see it it's pretty much what the iron ridge attachment looks like i've had some uh some of my engineers just copy and paste like this as the um as the detail for here but, uh, or they go to the manufacturer and the manufacturer sometimes on their website has the drawing for this attachment, the exact drawing. I actually drew this one out by hand and then I just use it every time. This is a very versatile uh, detail. You can copy and paste this to the next project or other projects that have used a cylindrical type, I mean, uh, flash jack or something. Uh, I, I copy and paste that detail from other uh, projects that I've done on. Okay, looks like this load calculation is good. We got the square footage. It's pretty simple, 20 panels times that equals that square feet divided by the panel weight. All right, I guess the weight, the total weight divided by uh, the total area. See so panels, I usually do 10 pounds per structure. I'll put the other parenthesis here, just kind of make it look nice. And I think you did that correct. Yeah, that looks correct. Okay, one of my corrections is, <clears throat> you see there's different, I think you're using different size uh, letters for these labels. 
and I would like you to use all the same size lettering. This lettering looks a little smaller than this. So I guess choose one size of lettering. I think I do 0 0.07. I could be incorrect. But just choose one size of lettering that way it makes, makes it look more uniform. Uh, I have a new way of doing these. I have a new way of doing these attachments. Let's go on to the move, doing the attachments. There's a new way of doing attachments. And I, I think I'm going to show you. I think I have a video of it. I might send that one video to you as well. So I think I definitely have a new way of doing the attachments. I think I might just have a PDF of that to show you. So basically, the way I do the attachments now is I put attachments on this full rafter right here. One, two, one, two. And then on the other side of the array, I do one, two, one, two, okay? And then in the middle, I stagger them. So I start up here, one, two, three. And I think that's the furthest you can go uh, before you have to start all over again back over here, okay? So. I like to see them go diagonal and then again you go 72 inches over and then start another diagonal and then you go 72 inches over from that and then you start another diagonal until uh, I'll show you the PDF it makes a lot more sense when you see the PDF but um, this way you're hitting every single rafter here see how this rafter doesn't uh, have a load oh, you want that you want the full load of these arrays to be on every single rafter Okay, and then just on the end, you want uh, attachments just to hold it solid. Again, I would put the fire clearance in black and white. Um, your dimensions, so I dimensioned the array, the length and width of the array, good. And then I do the rafters, and then the spacing, very good. And then the fire code, very good. And then that that rail right there. Okay, so if the panels are landscape, I usually do an offset of 10 inches. If they're portrait like this, I do a, an offset of one foot, okay? And there is a specification from the manufacturer on this um, that the rails should be between nine inches and 12 inches from the side of the panel, okay? Between nine inches and 12 inches. So. If, if you're in between there, that's good. It's just my personal preference to use one foot using the portrait. And then the landscape, if you use one foot, you'll see that, that the rails kind of look too closer together, too close together. So that's why I use 10 inches for that. So that's my explanation of that. Um, this, I kind of don't like crossing the dimensions like that. Kind of uh, right there, kind of is confusing. Let's see if it looks like you did this compass very well. Good job. You brought it into the 330 seconds equals one foot. Very good scaling. You could do the scaling the same as you do on the front page on this one too, but I just kind of have memorized the inverse multiplier on that from the Doohickey website that I think I show in my lessons. So you did very good here. Okay, so here's another correction. Um, this one isn't. You know, it might change every time, it might not, but in this case, you are showing an AC disconnect here, and the customer did not want an AC disconnect, okay? Very good. It shouldn't like you uh, copied that over well. Let's move on to page three. Page three. Let's verify you uh, brought all this over. 335, so we'll go. 41, 34.1, 10.4. That looks right. It looks like you copied that over correctly. This is from uh, Inver. Let's kind of see if I. I think this is just the when the input, when the inverter turns on and when the inverter turns off when it gets too hot. Input. 
they had it a lot on these other data sheets, but it's really kind of an, an unimportant number. I might even delete that totally from my um, from my uh, template. Very good. Those kind of stay the same. Module configuration: two strings of ten. Very good. Branch. Um, that's ten panels in each string times. Uh, 41 volts. I choose the higher voltage for the VOC. And then 10 times 34.1, that's correct. And you have two strings, so it's two times the high, the ISC is, uh, that's correct, two times that. Uh, two times 10.49, yep, that's how it looks good. And then this is the overall system amperage. This is the in, in maximum inverter output without the face safety factor, okay? Now in my new template, I actually break this out. I have uh, calculations for strings, DC calculations for the string, and then I have a separate calculations for the system, AC. The AC, the output of this is 6,000 watts at 27.5. And then down here, I would multiply it by the factor of safety 125%. So I can go over this more with you in person, and you'll get to get, you'll get good at these calculations. I think you had a question here. So you did that correct. Times two string twenty four point one. Okay, you had a, a question because what's the input? 60, 16.5 amps per string. So you're only at ten point two one amps per string. 16.5 amps per string. I think that was your question. I think it's 45 amps total that you're allowed to go in there. I would recommend calling Jim LeBray at Solar Edge. He's my go-to guy to answer any technical questions from uh, any ch technical questions from Solar Edge. So Jim LeBray's number is 510-963-102. Two six. Again, that's five one zero nine six three one zero two six. So I'm gonna um, write it again. Five one zero nine six three one zero two six. Okay. That's Jim LeBray, and uh, he can answer any technical questions on for Solar Edge. Okay. I think you're looking somewhere down here, maximum input current, maximum input current is 16.5 amps. I believe that's per string. And then there should be an overall, I think it was on the old data sheet, the overall, what you were allowed to put in. But you're at 10.41, uh, I'm sorry, 10.21 amps, so you're good. Um, Okay, so right here you only have uh, how many amps? 10.21, so you can use number 10, USE2 type wire, okay? Right here I, I would put PV arrays with power optimizers. On my new template you'll see PV arrays with power optimizers, two strings of 10 panels, very good. Um, I usually like to put this label over here, that way it's not crossing any lines and confusing more people. So I do like to put it over here in this area. Um, so right here going to the junction box is USE two type wire, two positives, two negatives, two, uh, this should be number six copper now. I change this all there's uh, to number six copper wire. This is number six ground going all the way through. It has to be number six ground. I did it incorrect for a lot of plans for a long time but it's all based on this 200 amp bus. Um, this 200 amp main service panel, you need number six wire as a ground to go all the way through, okay? So, there's my other correction, number six wire. It's just uh, what they require. NEC 250, I believe article 250 is the code that determines this. Okay, now we're gonna go THWN two type wire. You're still doing two strings here uh, in two different conduits. Put number six wire here too. And you're only 10.2 amps uh, going in. Right here, solar edge, SE6000H-US. 
hand inverter. Um, you need to put the correct model number. And I would increase the size of that, those letters to be able to um, read it better. Right here you have 27.25 times the uh, 125%. I think it's like 31 or something. So right here, okay, max inverter output should be 27.25. You did this incorrect. 1.25 1, 1 times 27.25. Output. Let's verify that that's the output. The output of this inverter is 27.25 amps. Good. So let's do that real quick. 27.25 times 1.25, 125%. So 34.06 amps. Okay? So this breaker should be based on 34.06 amps. Okay? And actually, I'm not doing this the way that I draw it. I, the way that I draw it is I, I change this, and then I go up here, verify the panel modules. Another correction is you need to put the exact model number here. You need to put the exact model number. Uh, this is good. I would put LG Solar, 335 watt for the top line. The second line needs to be the exact model number. Um, You'll have power optimizers here. You need to put the power optimizers, P400 power optimizers. You're going to have 20 of those. Sub panel, no sub panel. I would just put reserve, or, or you can just keep that sub panel there and just put zero. Junction box, you have one junction box here. Okay, you turn, you change USC2 type wire and uh, bare copper. It should say bare copper, number six ground wire. You change bare copper to THWN2 type wire going to the end there. Um, so you do have one junction box there. You need to correct that. You need to correct this. This needs to be the exact model number. Uh, I would put it's 240 volts, not 220 volts. Um, reserved and AC disconnect. You do not have an AC disconnect on this project. so. Turn that off, just put zero there. You have one system ground, I already talked about that, and one bi-directional utility meter. This is installed by the utility company. So this is the meter on the side of your house, and this is actually what this is indicating. There's a meter on the side of your house counting uh, how much power you use. Sometimes it's attached right to that service panel, or right adjacent to it. Sometimes that meter is like 10 feet away, or way kind of far away from the, a house even so that's what that meter is right here I put the operating current I put 27.5 that's the raw current that's like um, kind of straight from the data sheets and then right here I would put the 34.06 the, at the 125 percent then you got this correct the maximum voltage for 410 volts you got that correct we, calculated that up here okay so okay uh, again this needs to be number six wire okay for okay we came in AC or DC okay there's one positive one negative for each string a to DC when it turns to AC this is turning it to AC you have three current carrying wires and one ground wire okay ground wire needs to be number six Three current carrying wires, it's not like positive and negative because the positive and negative, it's always switching from positive to negative within those current carrying wires, okay? So you actually have, an, it's one called L1 and then a neutral and then L2. And the current is, the uh, voltage is always changing, you know, 110 volts, actually 240, it should be 240 volts. So it's going in between those 240 volt potential voltage potential all the time. So uh, it's a lot different than just straight DC uh, voltage differential, okay? Here you're creating a voltage differential, and here you're changing that voltage differential to be alternating current. It's a different type of uh, current, electrical current. So there should be three current carrying wires here, and you're at 34 amps. 34 amps you 
do need to go, you can go up to 32 amps with number 10 wire. So you do need number eight wire there. So you did a good job there. You just need three current carrying wires and one ground, okay? And this all can fit in the three quarter inch EMT conduit. And I have an, a special JPEG in each one of my um, folders, my project folders that shows conduit fill info. And if you ever have any questions, you can access that as a reference. I see another correction here. So we're at 34 amps and you put a 45 amp breaker. There is in the market, if you go to Home Depot, you can see which breakers they often uh, sell. They often sell a 30 amp breaker, sometimes a 35 amp breaker. Right here, you can put a 35 amp breaker, but more often than not, they're gonna use a 40 amp breaker here, okay? Because that's what's sold the most in Home Depot. And that's the only reason why you would put 40 here, okay? But you can, you are allowed to put a 35 amp breaker there. And I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn between which one to tell you to put because even myself, I, uh, I often change it, okay? Now, so you're allowed to go up to 40 amps because of this 200 amp bus. So on a main service panel, there's an actual metal bus that the breakers go onto. They attach right onto that bus. And that bus is rated for 200 amps, okay? There's a rule, it's a 120% rule, that you're, you are allowed to go up to 120% of that bus rating, okay? You're allowed to go up to 120%, so 240 amps is 120% of that rating with the main circuit breaker plus your solar PV breaker, okay? And since you're allowed to only have a 35 amp breaker here, you do not have to derate this to 175 amps. You can keep it a 200 amp solar breaker. So I wanna see, um, oh, I'm sorry, you can keep this a 200 amp main circuit breaker. You do not have to derate. This determines if you have to derate. The reason why you'd have to derate is say you have uh, like uh, 60 amps coming off of this and you need a 60 amp breaker and you're only allowed to go up to uh, 40 amps on a 200 amp bus. So this would be 200 amps plus 60, that would equal 260, you'd be over. And so you'd have to derate this main circuit breaker in order to fit in that 60 amp solar breaker, okay? And you would only derate to 175, maybe 150 amps. If you're going down to 150 amps, the city checker, it might throw a red flag to the city checker and they would want electrical load calculations from a licensed electrical engineer. Okay, and that costs an extra $400 for uh, some of these companies. The other thing you can do if you uh, are derating too much, say you're putting like 80 amps in here, I would do what's called a line side tap. So you're tapping into the line coming in from the street before it hits that main circuit breaker. It's still within that electrical panel, but you're bringing the wires here and you're using these things called vampire clips and you're clipping one uh, per wire coming in from the street. That's kind of advanced stuff and you'll learn that as you go, but at least I just wanted to mention it and plant the seed in your brain. And it's fun. Correct this table, correct these two, correct this breaker. Um, I'll put this label on the side. I'll show you the uh, template that breaks these two in the uh, string calculations for DC and then system calculations for AC. Uh, make sure you're using the correct model numbers, okay? So this is most of the, uh, that's all your work is these first three pages. You're gonna find that your most of your work is in these first three pages. The rest is gravy, as you know. Uh, you place the correct data sheet there, correct data sheet here. Actually, this is not the correct data sheet. It's kind of interesting you did, I think this is an older version. This might be where you got the 220 volts for some reason. Yeah, this might be for Canada. So I think what you were thinking you were doing it correctly 
and you did do it correctly from this via this data sheet. I actually use the SE6000H-US inverter because I think the US stands for United States and there's some different certifications that we need here in the United States, one of them being UL1741. And I, they, they, the city checkers very much require that these are UL listed. This does not say anywhere on here that it's UL listed. So therefore, I think this inverter that you chose is from Canada or maybe another country. Um, so we would need to use, I usually typically just use the SE6000H-US type inverters. And then, uh, this is good. Iron Ridge Rail, I, this is a, uh, kind of looks like, kind of looks like you used a ground mount. But this would be uh, considered proper, I would say. What's important on these, is, in the attachments and the rail, is that it has this Class A fire rating. Okay, it's UL listed here. But you want to use the data sheets that say they're Class A fire tested and rated. Okay. Testing and analysis. Otherwise, they're going to ask for other sort of vacation uh, sheets. So I actually have in my in my library I have the Iron Ridge Rail uh, data sheets that I use and I have use the Iron Ridge um, attachment data sheets. I think I think that's where you got these attachments because I use the same exact data sheet for the flash foot. There's a separate type of flash foot too which is a little bit different than this. Power optimizers, this is good. So you see, uh, if you use that SE7600H-US type inverter, if you're using that, you can go up to 6,000 watts per string. But otherwise, you're doing um, 5,250 watts per string. Okay? Trying to show you the UL listed type stuff here. Um, sometimes it says the UL listing over here somewhere. There it is UL seventeen forty one. That's what they look for. And then uh, these. This you did good. I so this. I'm not sure what how you did this. But I usually just uh, go into the site plan and I copy just the house with the panels and the driveway. Um, you don't have to put the driveway label there. And I bring it into the sheet in full size and then I shrink it down. So you have all the lines there. But that's just how I do it. I think you might find in one of my videos how I, I place this. But this is fine too. The way you did it was fine as long as it's there. Okay, you change the address, that's good. 45 amps again. That breaker would be, uh, I would say just use 40 amps for that breaker because it's the most widely sold in all the department stores. So uh, that would be 40, so change that to 40 amps right down here. So you have 6,700 watts, the full DC wattage rating. Uh, this is incorrect. It should be 7,600 or 6,700. It should be 40 at 240 volts AC. This is direct. These four numbers are directly from this electrical page right here. So those four numbers should be 27.5341 volts, 410 volts, and 34.06 amps. Okay, that's what also goes down here. Okay, in those four. And this is just kind of like a summary. And you've seen these placards before. Okay, so that concludes the corrections on this project. You did a great job for your first time. I have to say, you did a lot better than what I was doing for my first time, first several times. 
and for the next project, uh, we'll go ahead and correct all of those items and then send it back to me. And then on the next project, I'll give you the, uh, the more up-to-date template, okay? Great, and have a great night, night, and thank you very much, Brenton, for this project. Have a good day.